Hello again viewers, my name is Alan and welcome back to my home workshop. This video is the first of two which cover the design and construction of an accessory for my horizontal bandsaw. And unlike uh, my other videos uh, to date, um, I actually recorded it while I was making the project. So there's a, a lot of uh, actual doing video, um, which means that the, um, the, the thing is quite a bit longer than some of the others. And I'd be pleased to hear your comments about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But anyway, let's get to it. Okay, what I want to have a look at here is a potential improvement to my horizontal bandsaw. We can see that this uh, jaw of the vise swivels, which sort of allows it to make up for um, uneven things. But it also means if you're trying to cut something short, like that for example, and you try and tighten that up in the vise, the vise goes cockeyed and it's actually significantly worse if the end that you're trying to cut off isn't supported by the outrigger here because you put the vice on but when you push down or when the cut goes down so you can see that's quite useless so basically as the thing uh, stands you can't use it for cutting anything shorter than what will reach across to the other side of the um, moving jaw here so I might just add that one thing I have done before to help deal with this um, cocking vice option issue is to put in um, uh, an, a, a sort of a, a, a piece of a, a long nut, a piece of a joining nut and a bolt. So when that goes in there, you do it up tight, it does at least stop the vice from um, cocking around. So that's definitely better. But I still don't really have uh, that much faith in it because it's really holding on a fairly short lead. And I'd be a bit worried that um, when this piece doesn't come out to the outrigger, it can't, it won't resist the push down. And any movement, of course, at, at all in this piece while it's being cut is likely to result in a broken blade. So I have um, done that before, but uh, I always thought it was a little bit dicky. What I've got it in mind to do <clears throat> is find a way of uh, improving that. And it seems to me that the best option is what we might call a slave vice. Uh, this might give some idea of the one of the concepts that I had. So I'm still working through a number of possible ways of doing this. This is my first idea. Um, something like that. The V block. That deal with round things. And I guess it will also deal with square things to a degree. But um, that's it, round or square. Uh, and to hold it in position, uh, to hold the workpiece in position, I was thinking of something like this with a couple of studs or something to so clamp down on the, there. And I reckon that would probably work fairly well. And uh, I could put this on the other way around, uh, depending on how big this is. So I think it would definitely work. But this piece, the, whatever I used for it, this is just a, something to represent a, a, a V to sit something in, it would actually need to be fixed, I think, to the, uh, the base plate. Because otherwise, um, you might sort of try and do that under the uh, drag pressure of the saw blade. So that was one idea. And I thought, well, maybe there's a better way. So let's see what else I could come up with. So my next idea was to think about having something like that. With that, maybe. So that, that could all be trapped and uh, it's not going to go anywhere, it's all holding square. Weld this in place I guess. Well, yes, weld that in place. And then I was thinking about having a slot here for a T-nut and a bolt. So that would certainly be able to apply clamping pressure downwards anywhere there. And uh, 
I guess that's part of the story. So now we can hold that down without, uh, well, we'll hold it down, but it still doesn't do much to resist the idea of it going around like that. It does address that problem of being pushed down. It doesn't really address that. So then I'm thinking, well, maybe I could do some wedging type thing here to stop the back from kicking over. No, I thought it was all getting a bit messy. So I'm going to come up with another idea. And this idea use a piece that's long enough to um, uh, much deeper here, clamp it in place so that, that's all good and then that's going to go anywhere and I um, can have a longer piece of this now like that and um, can still do the same idea with the slot and the bolt clamping down but now I can put a, a bolt in here to press on the back of the um, I guess it doesn't even need to be that long for what I'm saying to work. This we can go back to this idea. Cut this off at that, that height. This is just a bit of scrap that I've got. Slot, same as before, but now I can put a a bolt in the back of that and um, a jack screw that way. And of course it can only be that long, but that combined with a couple of three packers on this side, I think it's going to get uh, a good result. So I'm thinking at the moment that's the most promising uh, option. So I'm going to explore that one a bit further. So we'll start with cleaning the rust off this bit of plate. I'm using um, some sort of a scotch brighty thing. It seems to be very good at ripping rust off. So I've found these things to be more effective than a wire brush by quite a margin. Might put my face mask on too. All right, so now mark it out properly and uh, chop the piece off that we don't want. So I think we'll go with making it uh, 85 deep inside and considering it's about 8 thick, 
I might uh, cut it off at uh, 85 plus 8 or let's just say 90 I think it would be good enough get organised with a gas axe. So I think that's where this is going to come in handy. It's not going anywhere. Now, where's my wheelie attachment? This has not been used for a very long time, but I suppose it will still work. Yeah, not much good at doing things freehand if I don't have a, a steady drill over the place. get a straight edge to cut to as well. So how would this actually work? Okay, well I haven't tried using the gas axe for many years, so we'll see how we get on. Okay, well I did say it's many years since I'd used one, so, oh well, at least it sort of worked, well, that's not too bad a cut, considering how long it's been and how much I've forgotten. Right, time to, uh, time to do a bit of, um, cleaning and tidying up. So that's the uh, actually <coughs> the first time I've used this uh, welding table set up for cutting uh, and uh, these uh, angle brackets turned out to, to make that actually quite simple. Okay so it's time to uh, clean this guy up. I showed it the grindstone quickly just to knock the big lumps off. We'll clean it up with this uh, inserted to, uh, with this insert cutter. Uh, so right, 
take this out, I think, and swap it for the one that's got the one inch collet in it. The easiest thing to do. I don't have lots of these uh, NT40 holders, but uh, I've got a couple, and I keep one with a 10 mil collet in it for the um, center finder, the wobbler, and another one with a, a one inch uh, collet because that seems to be one of the more common sizes that I use. Uh, just in case uh, any viewers haven't really had any experience with these ER collet systems, the basic idea is you have a groove around here which locks into a ring at the back here. This particular uh, nut has got a ball race in it but they don't all have that. Anyway the idea is they, you hook one end into the that ring and press it in and then it snaps in like that. And the collet itself is split from both ends so that it, it can, the whole thing can crunch up. It doesn't just grip just on the end, the whole thing gets squashed. So I'm putting in a like that. And to get them out, just push them the other way. Right. It's a very good system. The only thing is when you're putting um, end mills and things in there, you need to do them up pretty darn tight to make sure they don't uh, sneak out. Put you in there. I always try to keep a piece of wood underneath the cutter just in case the sod falls out of the collet, which has happened. I'll do these up pretty snug. All right. I'm fire the machine up. Move over a bit. Something like that. A bit more. We'll go across like that to start with, just to find out what we've got. Uh, now, speed. Yeah, 900, that's probably good enough. Oh. I'll just pump a bit of oil into the lubrication system. So that's cleaned uh, most of it up and what's left really is where I had to do that restart. But I'll take another millimetre off, the final dimension here is not particularly important. So I think that's cleaned up well enough for my purposes. Might be a slight bit there, but I don't think there's anything there that I'm going to get excited about. So on to the next bit, next part of the job. So I just turn it round in the vise. Uh, just make it easier to give it a couple of strokes with a file.
I was wondering why it didn't sit in the vise that well. I just worked out why. But uh, I think you'll be able to see there. It's a long way out of square. Now, I don't know just how much of an issue that is for me because don't actually cut much in that plane. But it'd be nice to get it a bit better. So I think what I might do is see if we can get it in the, that sort of a position and do a skim on this side. I think that might be the go. Maybe it's not as easy as that because I suppose obviously it's uh, out on the inside as well. So, hmm. Let's just stop and have a bit of a think about what to do with this. Right, we're going to have a go at heating that. No idea whether this will work or it won't, but we're going to try. Looks like the tip needs a clean for a start. So we'll start there. Have to give up on that. I don't think that's going anywhere as an idea. Just can't get enough heat in there. With a fine touch of optimism I did actually just put a, a bit of pressure on that and it looks like it's gone a little bit so hmm well, maybe we've achieved something after all. I don't want to touch anything around there, of course, because it's going to be blooming mean, hot. Well, perhaps surprisingly, that's uh, a lot better than it was. I mean, it's still some way out, but it's definitely improved. It's bent across about there. I think that might be within range of uh, a facing operation to uh, get, it, get it good. Or to make it a lot better, I should say. Okay, so we're doing a couple of facing cuts, trying to improve things a bit. Half a millimetre cut. Well, let's clean things up a bit. We'll let all that cool down and have a proper inspection. So here's a little tip that some might find useful. Um, 
This is a, a magnetic pickup tool. And you can see I've got a lot of magnetic, a little metal swarf there, metal swarf on the vise. If I try and use this just as supplied, just as the bare shaft, it wants to keep sticking to the bulk of the table. But I've put a little piece of uh, plastic bottle cap on the end here now. It's actually quite easy to run the magnetic pickup tool over without it sticking to the table. So it extends its usability quite a bit. He's picking up all the swarf. Oh, that's, so that's what happens when you haven't got something like that there. It's, it sticks to things that you don't want it to. Makes it hard. Makes it harder to use. Yeah, just a quick little tip. Okay, well that uh, certainly cleaned this face up. Um, isn't that very good surface finish because there's quite a bit of chatter going on, but it's done the job. So we're now quite a bit better off here than we were before. Still, of course, um, a long way away from perfect, but uh, certainly good enough for this exercise. Now, of course, that's uh, quite a ways off inside, as perhaps you can see from there, it's quite a big gap. But I don't actually think that's going to be much of a problem because the idea here is to clamp things across the base here and uh, I have it in mind to uh, run this here to clean that corner out which in the process will create a bit of a shoulder here for things to be pressed up against and if there's a gap up here I don't think that's going to make any difference we'll still have a solid thing to clamp things against so I think we'll press on with this prototype and see whether it uh, turns into something useful or not okay well time to um, switch the cutters over again put the one inch put the one inch collet back in and tighten them up with my Franken hammer combine hammer and socket get me a piece of wood under the cutter in case it falls out what they do seem to like to do when they come loose there you go. Uh, I think we might start with this um, roughing cutter roughing in mill now this cutter can't clean the corner out completely anyway because the the bottom of the cutter is not flat across, but it gets pretty close. So let's get a bit of a, a setup here. Set the quill DRO to zero. Yeah, I think that'll be close enough to the back for the first cut. I come down to a couple of millimetres up off the bottom. Take a first cut and see how that goes. Uh, right, well I think we'll go with about six or seven hundred RPM I suppose. See how that goes. It's just a test feed by hand, that seems to work, so now we'll get some power feed happening. So we'll zero the DRO, come this way half a millimetre. Right. And down half a millimetre, or oh, down a millimetre, that's right. Like that. 
Let me see how that goes. I'll start feeding by hand again just to get the feel of it. All right, seems to be feeding in all right. So we'll go with that with some power feed. Okay, so I seem to have a bit of an issue with the camera just then. I'm not exactly sure what, but anyway. All right, I think we'll give that a go like that. Zero that. Okay. Put it in gear, Alan. Isn't going to do anything in neutral. Right. thing is with that milling cutter it's really quite long and very long really in relation to its diameter so it doesn't have anywhere near the stiffness of the um, roughing cutter that I was using to start with so cutting as it is right on the end of its full length it needs to be a very light cut because uh, otherwise it, it just doesn't have the stiffness so all I'm asking it to do here is clean out a tiny fillet right in the, uh, the bottom corner of that um, of that piece of metal. See how that's worked out. Yep, yeah, I'll be happy with that. It's perfectly good enough for my horizontal bandsaw. It's not like it's uh, cutting with uh, great precision. So, you see how that will work with that fella in there. Just set. Yeah, something like something like that. Maybe over just a touch. Yeah, something like that. Clamp that in place. So then we'll be able to put things like that there. And be able to, uh, when I've worked my clamping mechanism out, cut really short things. In fact, it should, should also be possible to do cut something like that once I've uh, got the clamp sorted out. One thing which I hadn't thought about though is the um, outrigger support here. So I might have to think about uh, whether I can, how I can put a, a packing, something there to make up that uh, bit of material, this thickness there attached under here maybe and across oh, I have to give that one some thought because I think that that will make it a bit more useful as well anyway getting there so now time to think about the piece that's uh, going to come up here and across and provide the, uh, the vertical clamp arrangement so thanks for watching and if you enjoyed it please like subscribe and watch out for the next chapter